Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create a query string in JavaScript and also handle it in the location you send it to. So in case you haven't come across a query string before, it's a way that you can send data to a URL by appending a query string to the end of that URL. And that URL, it could be an API endpoint or it could simply be another page. So in this example, I'm going to be sending the data to page.html, which exists in the same folder as this document, index.html. And this is located on port 5501 on localhost. So in most cases, you would of course be accessing an external URL, but for this example, I'm keeping it local. Okay, so the important part for this tutorial comes after the URL itself, and that is the query string which is here, and you need to start it in a URL with a question mark, then the browser knows that a query string is about to start, and then you can pass in your query string. And the format for a query string is quite straightforward. So data is stored in key value format. So you specify first a key name, followed by equals, and then the value. And if you want to include another item, you write ampersand, followed by the key and value of the next item. And I'll add another one here. So this is one way that you can do it, hard coding the values. But in many cases, you want the value of the query string to be set dynamically to contain, for example, the values that a user has entered in a form. So what I'm going to do is to delete all of these hard coded values because we're going to be creating a query string using JavaScript. And I'm going to make the URL down here, the URL, which still includes the question mark, which means a query string is coming next. And then after that, we want to include query string. So we'll be creating the value for that now. So you can create a new query string out of a JavaScript object or an array. But in both cases, you want to start in the same way by creating a new URL search params object. So you do that by calling the constructor, remembering to include the new keyword before it. And I'll save this new object in a variable called search params. So the URL search params constructor, it's a very powerful tool that's going to make your life much easier when wanting to create a query string or decode a query string. So let's start by creating a query string out of a JavaScript object. So I've already created one. I just need to uncomment it. Okay, so in this object, three properties. So if you want to create a query string out of a JavaScript object, your life is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is pass in the object into the URL search params constructor when you call it. Now let's take a look at the result. So we're not going to get the query string back immediately. What you get back is a URL search params object. And what this has on it is a two string method. And if you apply that, you will extract the query string from it. So let's do that now. Search params to string. And that's going to return the actual query string all formatted. So to check that's working, let's log the query string to the console now. So you see our JavaScript object has been formatted as a query string. So you can now send this data to a URL by appending this query string at the end of the URL after a question mark. So that's what we're doing here. We have the URL that ends in a question mark, and then we're appending the query string that we have now created. And now if I click on the button on this page, that takes us to page.html. If you take a look at the address up here, you see that the query string is appended to the end of the URL. So we now have the data on the next page, but it's contained in query string format at the end of the URL. So what we want to do is to process that information, turn it back into a JavaScript object on page.html. So the first thing you want to do to be able to read the data is to get the URL and the query string at the end of it. So that is stored on window.location.href. And you want to pass that URL into a new URL object. 
So now you can easily get the search parameters by accessing the search params property. So I'll save that in a new variable called search params. So I'm once again going to call the URL search params constructor, this time passing in the search params that I extracted from the URL. I want to use the new operator before it because again, I want to create a new URL search params object. And on that, there's a method I'm going to call called entries. So what that's going to return is the data inside search params in an array-like format where the data is stored in an array of arrays. So if that's confusing, don't worry because I'm about to log that to the console. So as I mentioned, it's an array-like object. You can access the data if you use an iterative method to access it, but if you log entries to the console, you won't be able to directly access it that way. Now, in these cases, what you can do to create an actual array from this array-like object is use array.from, passing in the array-like object, and that will return an actual array. So I'll log that to the console. So you can see the data formatted in an array of arrays. So the array, it contains three items, and each item in that array is itself an array, which contains two items, the key and the value for each of the parameters. So how does it work for an array? Because that's slightly different. So I've already created an array down here. So I'll move this up below the object and uncomment it, and I'll comment the object. And then I've also created a loop here. So I'll place that below here for now. So with an array, you can't just pass it in to the URL search params constructor like I was doing with the object. So I'm going to delete that value from inside the URL search params constructor, and I'm going to move this console log down below the loop because the search params are not going to be ready until I've run this loop here. So this for loop, it's running as many times as there are keywords in the keywords array. So the way that you can add the items in the keywords array to the search parameters is to call the append method on the search params object that's been created. So the key, it could be anything you want, but it should be unique. So I'll say V plus I, actually I plus one, because I starts at zero. So I'd like the key values to be starting at one, then the value each time should be the array item at index i. So we'll still have v1, v2, v3, and the values will be these keywords. So this is really just a slightly longer way of getting to where we were before with the object. The rest of the process on index.html is the same. I still need to call the toString method on the search parameters object. And then I'm going to get the query string and I'm appending that to the end of the URL, which takes me to the next page. So you can see that the data here in the query string has been created for us with v1 equals Chrome, v2 equals Firefox, etc. Now, when I click go to page, the data in the query string is stored in key value format. So it's still an array of arrays, but we just want a simple array. So to change that, all we need to do here is to say instead of the entries, we want the values, which is going to get just the values. And it's still returning an array-like object. So I still use array.from on the result, and then I get the array back. So now when I refresh, you see that I have Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. Now, finally, if you have a complex object, probably a good way to go about this is to use JSON stringify and then pass it at the other end. So what I mean by a complex object would be something like this object here with an array on it. So the third value here would be an array instead of a simple value. So when this is converted to a query string, 
this would be made into a string and you wouldn't get it out the other end as an array. So probably the easiest way around this is to stringify the entire object and then append that to the search params object that you create. So I'm going to give this a value of v1 here and the value is going to be json.stringify and I'm passing in the object there. So there's only going to be one item on this query string and that's going to be under the key v1 and you can see that URL search params it's inserted a lot of special characters for me to make sure that it's compatible for sending after a URL. And now we just need to modify the handling side. So there's not actually too much to do here because we're getting the values back still. There's only one value and that's going to be stored in an array. So to access the result, it's going to be on the array variable at position zero. And because it's in JSON format, I call JSON pass and I pass in that value to it. That's going to give me now the object as a JavaScript object, not as JSON anymore. And now if I log that to the console, you'll see that we now have the JavaScript object, including an array on the property v3. So this is how you can send data to a URL, which as I mentioned, can be a page or an API endpoint by appending a query string at the end of the URL. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video, which helps us with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.